Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. Okay, uh, is everybody having a good time so far? Yes. Everybody good? Okay, yes. awesome. Because I feel like we're just, I feel like we're just getting kicked off. Okay, so Brian, earlier you mentioned uh, Tom Skinner, and, yes. and man, uh, he <laughs> when when. Wow. Uh, well, first off, one of the records that I picked up that first introduced me to a bunch of the Red Dirt mm-hmm. guys was a record called Red Dirt and Spirit by yeah, the yeah. Dirt and Spirit by the Great Divide, right? Absolutely. And uh, let's see, Skinner was on that record. Uh, Bob Childers too. Bob Childers was on that record. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we lost uh, uh, Byron's microphone. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he did that on purpose. It happens. Probably. All right, Gabe, you're you're answering this question until we get that mic back on. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so uh hmm. you guys uh you know, you guys started uh-huh. in in Wonderful. an area where there was a musical heritage um that obviously was being passed on to a bunch of songwriters. So these were guys that were committed to being uh-huh. there in the community and pouring into uh, other musicians that were around them. Tell us a little bit about what it was like to be in that that community because, I mean, you're talking, what, uh, Stoney LaRue, Jason Bolin, McClure, uh, Coney Cody Kennedy, Canada. McClure, Great Divide. Like, yeah, uh, And then there, there, we could go on and on. Gene Collier, we got wrote, uh, voice yeah, from Oklahoma, uh, Tom Skinner, Bob Childers, Rick Riley. Uh, these are all guys that uh, that they kind of laid down the foundation of what, of what mm-hmm. we're doing now. Um, but I, and I still don't even know what style of music we play, so we call ourselves Red Dirt. But whatever the uh, whatever name you want to give it, it, it mainly comes from uh, all these songwriters that we you know grew up um, listening to. And then later on, when that Woody Guthrie Festival thing started, we uh, started hanging out with Tom Skinner and uh, and Bob Childers, who is known as the Godfather of Red Dirt. And um, so we got to know them, and then. Once we got up and, and we started playing ourselves, well, then we started running into the, the Cody's and the Mike's and the Jason's and the Stoney's and the Bo Phillips and the uh, there he is. And Mike Hosties and, uh, you know, the, the, the Oklahoma scene. Um, well, that's kind of given way to the younger crowd like us and like Wink Burcham and Dylan Stewart and uh, a bunch of good friends of ours kind of from Tulsa area and John Fulbright, you know, yeah. uh, Fulbright. Yeah, for sure. Heck of an artist himself. John's a good friend of ours. He played keys with us last time. We were at the Canes Ballroom. And then there's a guy, uh, Parker Millsap. I don't know if you guys yeah, know Parker. Yeah, Parker. He used to stand outside the window at our home base called the Deli in Norman, Oklahoma. And it's not a deli. It's a smelly old bar. But <laughs> Parker no Millsap. Food. They haven't had food since 1971. <laughs> but he'd stand outside and watch us through the window. And, uh, you know, we'd play some. And we'd be like, hey, Parker, come and play. And he'd come and play a couple of songs. And then he'd like... He couldn't Shrug stay. Over. He'd have he to was, walk back out and watch through the window because he was just a kid. He was and just we, a uh, kid. Yeah, they pass it on to us, and we've uh, we've done our best to try to spread it around and and you know show the same love to those that uh that are they're doing it too. You know, well, like Ben McKenzie and uh, Jeremy Nip from the Reed South Hall Band. Like those guys are out there doing it too. Just a, kind of a different part of the scene. You yeah. know. So they're all buddies. Oklahoma's a real tight knit group. Well, pick a song. Do y'all do y'all have one of like uh, e- either from the early days, right, of when you guys were first cutting your teeth, or oh, is there like Skinner? a Skinner song? Yeah, yeah. we we'll do some Skinner. You want to do Crystal or? Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, can we do two Skinner songs? She's a rebel girl. 
Whistle come from Alabama See no banjo on a knee She smiles bigger than Texas She sings better than Tennessee Texas and Tennessee Crystal, she's a rambling girl Things, things like words, words and melody. You know she might come back sometime Might come back sometime Crystal, she's a rambling girl She might come back sometime Crystal, she's a rambling girl Go moving on down the line Crystal, she's a rambling One of my favorite songs ever written. I'll tell you why in a few. Can I get a little more of my guitar in the wedge if that's possible? There ain't one nickel's worth of difference. Not in Kansas and Nebraska A lot of wide open spaces Every now and then a tree I suppose if you was born and raised around Well, you might beg to differ Baby, I'm, I'm from, from Oklahoma, Oklahoma. They, they all look pretty, pretty much, much the same to me See, way back in 1961, Roger Maris, he was the man. He, he hit more home runs than anyone. When I can't understand why the commissioner would put an asterisk in the record books by his name. He was a, a hero, hero to me, and he was steroid free. I'll be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Ashamed. You see, I go driving north on 99, and it's raining cats and dogs. And, and those, those cars, cars and trucks, trucks, they pass me just like I'm standing still. Ah, but just like a herd of turtles, I push onward through the fog. I'm turning my mountains into, into little bitty more hills right away. Oh, what's her name? 
name She ran off with what's his face They moved off somewhere, someplace Yeah, and they probably feel the same Cause you can run all the way to Timbuktu And you ain't never gonna hide From what they both knew deep inside Lord, did neither want was shame Oh yeah Tom Skinner to rest after Tom passed away. We were out in a field in Bristol, Oklahoma, where Tom grew up. And I was trying to find somebody that knew the lost verse of this song, because I had heard tale told of a lost verse. And so I tried to ask my friends that were all there, and nobody could really think of it, because everybody was really sad. And I may have snorted some of Tom's ashes, and then I met Tom's son while I was making a sandwich, and he said, of course I know the words to that verse. My dad wrote it. Well, Houston, we got a problem. It's a countdown to disaster. She had to get, get there faster. So, so she put, put a diaper on. Said there's a crazy woman down in Florida, Lord. And she's trying to steal my man. So she got a BB gun and some duct tape. And one Astro minivan. Oh, yeah. Songs that are ripped. And I'll tell you that now because at the end of this song, come to find out it's not really about one thing, it's about five different things. And as a songwriter, if I wrote a song about five different things, I would throw that song away. But Tom just wrote the last verse of Nichols with a difference, and he, he wrapped the whole thing up in a really masterful and fine way. Crazy genius. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> See, I try and try to write new songs And I, I pray I come up with something As, As you can see, see lately I've, I've got, got nothing, nothing Intelligent to say It's just a bunch of yada yada And blah 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 And there's so much jibber jabber A little bit of abracadabra And then some lot of freaking die Oh yeah worth a difference not in Kansas and Nebraska it's a lot of wide open spaces every now and then a tree yeah. Yeah. I think it's a difference Tom Skinner for you Very guys nice. now you see why we love Tom Skinner so much what an incredible songwriter huh? man I love that okay so uh you guys, so you guys have known each other for how long, Brian and... Uh, 10, 12, 13 years? 10, 12, 13 years? 10, 12, 13. 13. I'm okay. not sure one of those... Well, we're not too good at math. That's what we no, play see, math. Uh, <laughs> we ain't got a real strong math background. Gotcha. And y'all started, uh, you, you, you started by seeing each other perform at open mics and, and running around well, on the we, scene together. I think we, the thing that really sealed the deal was when we did that weekly deli show. We started every Monday night and we would play from you know, 10 o'clock until 1.30 or whatever and it was usually me and Gabe and like four people in the crowd. And yeah. Nooch at the front door. Yeah, Jim with the, Carnucci, our drummer back there. Uh, he played with all the red dirt, red dirt phenoms. Uh, he left us to go play with the troubadours. So that's a different story. But we'd walk into the deli, and uh, he'd be at the door taking cash and checking cards with a, a marching, marching snare. snare in his lap, and he'd just play along. And then finally, we convinced him to let uh, somebody else work the door, and he came in and started playing drums with us. Uh, then we looked up one day, and uh, there were 13 of us on the stage, yeah. half this size. And, uh, wow. I think last time we played Billy Bob's, we had 12. So we still kind of keep the tradition alive. 
we had guys playing together the last time at Billy Bob's that had like been playing with us the entirety of our career and had never played with one another. And so that wow. was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like it's this nuts. roaming ensemble of well, performers. Yeah, we got, I mean, we got friends, and our friends are good. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. Okay, so so like, here here's what I want to do. I thought it would be interesting. Is uh, uh, you know, you guys have been playing music together for a long time. Brian, I, I wonder, what is your favorite song that Gabe has written or performs? And then I'm going to make you do the same thing for him. So oh. you call out a song you that, that, that you want him to play and tell us the reason. I'd say probably Me and the Whiskey, it's, it's a rock and roll song. Yeah, I like that one. It was on the TV. They put it on the TV. Somebody did. It wasn't us, but it, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, uh, I got a call. Whatever. I got a call from uh, the guy that was uh, managing us at the time, and he said, "Hey, uh, Whitey Morgan, '78, they want to record me and the whiskey. Uh, can I have your permission?" I said, "Well, technically, I don't need it, but sure." Uh, and then a while later, he calls me. and He goes, "Hey, guess what? Uh, Yellowstone wants to use me and the whiskey for their show." And I was like, "Heck yeah, I'm gonna be on Yellowstone." And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great for you guys. Uh, I, I can't wait to make this happen. And I was like, yeah, great. Thank you so much. And uh, he goes, hey, just one more thing. Uh, they're going to use Whitey Morgan's version. <laughs> and I was so happy. <laughs> no, I, I, it's great. And, and uh, I, I appreciate those guys for covering the song. And uh, they do it a little bit different. But, uh, yeah, this one's done pretty well for us. Just me and the whiskey I still smoke so I had to change the lyric Who gave up on her trying to get found And Jesus gave up on me But I gave up that wine and bread And now it's just me and the whiskey So keep your glass, give me the bottle Towards empty, moving full of throttle. And should you catch yourself worrying about me? Just go on and ease your mind. Know that I'll be fine. But just me and the whiskey. Self-control gave up my sanity. <laughs> well, I gave up on all my friends and now it's just me and the whiskey, which sounds really good right now. Oh, 
That's not fair at all. Because <laughs> Brian White just happens to be one of my very favorite songwriters in the entire world. Uh, and I count it a blessing every time I get to get up on stage and we get to play music together. Uh, so picking one song is really hard to do. California, uh, open invitation that we started off the show with, that song makes me tear up about every other time that we play it. And I have no idea why. I don't either. Uh, Hey then, just take just just take the compliment, dude. Just say it. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. There's there's a lot. Um, one that I really love playing. Uh, so I can't pick a favorite song. I can pick one that I, I like playing more than a lot of the other ones. Um, and I love the song. It was co-written by a good friend back there in uh, Oklahoma named Buffalo Rogers. And uh, I like story songs. And uh, Brian and Buffalo, they. Uh, they birthed a junkie and then they killed him in a hotel room fire. Yeah, of his own making. Uh, the the real. I mean, are there? Are there I mean, kids? that's that's are, the long and short of it, right? No, that's I mean, right. Yeah, no. Are there, I was just trying to see if there were kids here. I was going to tell an adult story. <laughs> um, you no. Know, well, we were in Tupelo, Mississippi, and. I don't know. I ate some funny pieces of an index card, and uh, yeah, me too. What was what was that? And like four, fourteen or sixteen hours later, I couldn't even go in the the, the Starbucks without sunglasses on. So that was cool. Uh, but this song had changed for the night before. It was in a minor key, so it was more like very strange and uh, minory and scary sounding. And then when I got up and I li listened to my phone memos, uh, voice memos on my telephone, uh, the song was like this. Nothing's cooler than a song about a junkie dying in a hotel fire that sounds like this. Well, I'm drawing twin lines on a cheap motel mirror. I'm watching my free HBO. Swerving my way from Fort Worth to Houston. And missing a woman I don't even know Well, little boy Blue had a rig and a spoon When a paycheck that went straight to his arm Well, he lost his way on the highway, they say He was near to the devil, so far from the farm Shine bright on your eyes tonight And the old times that be not forgotten And I would crawl my way to you Like rattlesnakes through the cotton Late hopping straw Shag carpet 
Lit like midnight on a Chinese New Year And he caught one last breath To the heat of the moment And through the soul gas and the cinder His end he drew near That's a cool song. Yeah, yeah, it is. Are y'all having a good time tonight so far? All right. We, we need to do a couple of things. First off, guys, I need a liner to start off the radio program. So if you guys want to... liner? One of you two guys... This, yeah, I know hey, you, probably lo- you probably love these. La, 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 liner. This is the damn quails, and this is real life, real music. And then you guys are going to go nuts, okay? You Can y'all do that? Hey, you do the first All right. Part, you do the part. Till okay. I go like this. All right. This is the damn quails. And this is real life, real, real music. music. And low. Perfect. That was great. That was great. Okay, real quick. If you look on your table in front of you, I told you I was going to tell you a little bit more about you, about, about our corporate sponsors. Yes. You'll find this little brochure right here. This is from our friends at Caldwell Communities. They actually have two communities in the area uh, that sponsor the show. One is Chambers Creek, Creek up in Willis, and the other one is the Highlands down in Spring. If you're looking for a home or know somebody that is, please take this, refer them to uh, these communities. Um, because here's the deal. All of our sponsors put money back into the places that they do business in something that we all love, and that's music. So when you have the opportunity to support them, support them. Not the least of which are my friends over at Chicago Title Houston. Y'all wave your hands over there, Lacey. You've been sponsoring, working with us for the last couple of years. Thank you guys for helping us make tonight happen. Huge sweethearts. I've closed. I've done a closing with them before, and uh, it was less painful than other closings. (laughs) They make you sign half the paperwork. No, I don't know how many papers you sign, but they're great at what they do. And then my friends over here at the Griffin Realty Group, they have helped. How many, how many, how many families have y'all helped in this crazy real estate market in the last year? Like 200 something? How many? 297 families. And I don't, if you're from around here, the real estate market is absolutely crazy right now. I, I want to sell my house, but I have no idea what I would go buy. They know the answers. So, wow, awesome. So go talk to the Griffin Realty Group. If you've got any realty needs, you want to know what your home's worth, you want to know what homes are going for in your neighborhood, stop by and see them. Y'all wave your hands so they can see you. Let's give all of our sponsors a big round of applause. Thank you for helping put tonight's show on. 
Did any of you guys experience traffic getting here tonight? No. The, tra the traffic was absolutely horrible. So here's here's one thing I want to do because Dosi -si Do has been making this show amazing for us uh, for a long time. And tonight we all had a hard time getting here. Some of our equipment didn't get here till the last minute. Paul back there on sound is doing everything he can to work out all the kinks and make things happen for us. Thank you for that, Paul. Yes, Phil, thanks Paul. for Thank thanks you, for. Paul stepping in and uh, most of all thank you guys again for being here tonight because this is amazing and yeah, we're having a great I time love playing here man this is a great a great place to hear bands and see bands and listen to songs and really really get the full story so yeah did we properly introduce everybody no. in the band yet why don't why don't we do that uh, to my left here is uh, haystack kevin foster on the bass tonight yeah. he Over. plays a whole bunch of different instruments over here to my right is Mr. Lane, the Hawk Hawkins. Yeah! The Hawk! He spends a lot of his time bouncing around. Stack Hawk. Uh, back here is our uh, original drummer uh, that started out with the damn coils way back in the day, Mr. Giovanni Carnuccio. Yeah! And uh, he played with us until Evan Felker and those boys came and stole him from us. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to get him back one of these days. All right. Well, I, I think we just did it, actually. Do y'all want to? Uh, you've played us one new one tonight. Is there something else, maybe? That's um, yeah, we could do a newbie. Uh, let's do. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Which one? Peace. Yeah, we can do that. I wrote this on the first time I experienced true helplessness over a situation. At least the first time that I can properly remember. And I was in a place called Venice, Nebraska. And I was hanging out out back where the cooks uh, smoke cigarettes and all the cats come up and eat the scraps or whatever. And it started raining and I couldn't write the song in the rain. So I tried to go inside and there's people inside. And I don't like writing songs around people. So I checked the van, there's people in the vans. I couldn't write in the van either. And then I finally ended up in the gear trailer by myself in the rain. With there's peace in the valley, I am king of the hill. We run in your rat race. I am standing still, washed in the blood of all this time that I've killed. So say ye whatever ye will. If there's peace in the valley, I am king of the hell. If there's peace in the valley, I am king of the hell. There's rest for the righteous. I am up until the dawn. I am exalting Chad Sullins. Long since moved on. I ain't slept a wink now, not for weeks since you've gone. Love's led you long overdrawn. If there's rest for the righteous, I'm up to the dawn. If there's rest for the righteous, I'm up to the dawn. Now. Sit on 
the valley, I'm king of the hill. I'm broke, I'm half homeless. Oh, and I can't pay my bills. And I always figured she would get tired of my thrills, but I just prayed that she never will, but she will if there's peace in the valley. I want to ask about another song off of Out of the Bird Cage yes. because I want to hear the uh, the story behind it. Which one? The Man in the Mirror. And parenthesis, the girl on the plane. Yeah. What a great hook. Well, thank you. Uh, I had to put that parenthetical on there. A, because I really wanted a parenthetical country title in a song. It's kind of one of my bucket list items or whatever. Uh, and then uh, two, because the you know Michael Jackson song or whatever. Uh, it, also, it's really funny he did that, and then we ended up with three parentheticals, uh, parenthetical titles on that that one album. We should have spaced them out maybe a little bit, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, my two my two favorite words in the English language are cease and desist. <laughs> I'm getting that tattooed. Uh, my, I told my friend Travis uh, that I didn't really do the thing in the beginning of the song that I say that I do, or like, you know, I'm not the kind of dude that's going to breathe fog on a window pane and like write some chick's name in it. But it makes a great thing to put in a song or whatever. And I told my buddy, it's Travis an image, that, man. It's an image. And he was like, well, that just totally ruins a song for me. So I hope I didn't do that to any of you right there. <laughs> Well, the frost on my window still spells out your name. It's a foggy reminder on each sad little pain. Now the mugs in the kitchen that I ain't broke yet. You drank from each morning while you smoked cigarettes. clothes in the closet but they got left behind with a note that you cried on you dated and signed said by the time you read this one now I'll be phoenix bound don't you bother my mama don't you follow me down Just to the blame Just the man in the mirror And the girl on the plane So wine up in the cabinet Well, it's it's probably gone bad It was Franzi, it was never any good in the first place But I'm sure that you want some If you ever come back When the cuckoo went hungry So he, he flew out, out the door, door. That, that damn, damn clock, clock don't tell nothing Nothing, nothing no, no more, more. Just to the blame Just 
table tonight we've got uh, maybe some one-of-a-kind things some things about to be out of print some well, things like six copies of down the hatch over there i think six copies the last our, six. our de facto tour manager uh, they're a thousand dollars a piece <laughs> <handcuffed me. laughs> yeah. and that's a steal that's a pretty good that's a pretty good steal so she she took me upstairs and um uh made me sit down and hand right out some lyrics so there's a some handwritten lyrics over there as well. Um, a couple, and uh, if you stick around after the show and you want one, then um, five hundred dollars. We do a raffle. We're five hundred dollars tickets apiece. Uh, <laughs> a raffle. A two raffle. copies. I like it. And actually, two, we're gonna raffle down to two people and those who have to fight to the death. So. <laughs> That's I love how, it. That's how we do it. With knives and all sorts of things. You know? So the guys will be hanging out at the merch table uh, yeah. after yes, the show. Absolutely. But we've got time. We, we, we got time for a few more, guys. Believe it or not, uh, it's already 930, but we started a little late. So well, let's... You know. uh, Let's let's play play Keep on a few cooking. more songs. Y'all just y'all just pick two or three more. And let's. Uh... Well, here's the thing you don't understand is that uh, we uh, are when we first got started, we would do uh, four sets at this place called Libby's with our buddy John Fulbright <laughs> yeah. and Aaron Holt, and then we'd go yeah. to the deli. We do four sets there, and um, uh, so uh, until the law comes in and kicks us out, we we probably won't stop unless somebody shuts off the power. Uh, <laughs> uh, especially when you guys are being so sweet and listening to us, but. Uh, it's my my turn, I think. Almost. Uh, yeah, my turn. Okay, I'll, I'll do this one. Uh, and this is one of the songs that I wrote down over there. And this song, I think, went to number two, number three on the Texas music charts. And it was um, uh, pretty incredible. Uh, Fool's Gold was our first single. And that went to number one on the TexNet 50. Uh, I think it hit number two, number three in the Texas Regional Radio Report. So our, uh, Check this out. Our first two singles both went top three uh, in the region. Um, we were standing outside of a show one time, and we were opening up for Josh Abbott band, and he walks over and he goes, hey, you guys are a bunch of cool-looking idiots. And we're like, ah, that's funny. <laughs> and he goes, no, but on, in all honesty, how the hell did you guys do that? I mean, we should one? really tell him the brownie story if we're going to talk about Josh Abbott. But... <laughs> The, I'm sorry, what, it's, did I forget one? Remember the brownie story? Oh, yeah, I remember yeah. the brownies. Hey, you guys, uh, somebody brought us some brownies. The sweet old lady brought us some brownies. A sweet old lady you would never think would put anything yeah. extra in her brownies. So Josh Abbott goes, hey, man, do you guys, do you guys have all you want? Take, take all the brownies that you want. We're like, oh, yeah, well, I'm, right. I'm kind of hungry. They were really good brownies. Yeah, they were and really they were good brownies. Too, so they, were, they knew how to get me. And uh, so uh, they're like, uh, stage call, coils, you're up in five. And we start walking up the steps, and my legs turn to jello, and I'm going, what's like wrong with these talk. stairs? <laughs> uh, they kicked us off, and the first thing, some guy in the front row was like, 
F the Sooners or whatever. Like, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, so, yeah, then we get off stage and uh, we're like, man, what? Why did you do that to us? So he was like, Well, I didn't tell you to take it before the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're they're a funny bunch, them Josh Abbott band benders. Always been good to us, and we love those guys. Uh, here's one. Uh, yeah, our second single did real well for us, and then. There's some lyrics over there you can haggle with uh, V over those if you want to. What? It's acceptance of 
failure and losing a game with a smile and a handshake and a quiet ever building rage got knocked around in a real small town and they poked and they prodded and they marched me around for a laugh in the snow they tried to tear a good man's soul Space to get lost in is one for the road It's two if you can let it go When I was thick but the water's deeper The wine works fine but the whiskey's cheaper Turn it around quick before your sun goes down Our sponsors and do si do I, I want to tell you guys thank you for Anytime. taking time out of the beginning of your week to come hang out with us before you go out on a run for the rest of the week. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us, man. man hey, man, uh, we, we just like everybody else didn't work for almost two straight years. And uh, unlike everybody else, we didn't work for almost two years before that. So we're just glad to be out of the house, man. Thanks for having us. <laughs> well, we're glad for you to be here. And... Uh, don't forget to go over and check out the items that are going to be available at the merch table. Uh, I got a few items in the trunk of my car, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not vouching for those. Stay at the merch table. <laughs> no, I mean, there's good stuff in there. <laughs> I bet there is. I bet there is. You got one of those, uh, you got one of those Scientology. Uh, hey, I learned everything I know from my McClure, so. <laughs> yeah, so hey, stay can I, stay inside. Me, can, I, can I tell just a quick story to, to uh, so 
this is how Matt McClure kind of, uh, <laughs> he took us under his wing, but then he kind of just uh, threw us in front of the bus out from underneath his wing. Uh, so the very first time we ever played Billy Bob's, uh, he gives us this giant bottle of fake blood, and he said, I will fire you from the label if you don't use all of it. And this is not, we're not talking like like watery fake it, blood. It, this it, is like it, premium it like fifty bucks a bottle, of fake blood. Yeah, yeah. Like in a big blood. bottle. If you don't use all of it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you from the label. And we we're like, I think it's actual uh, I, blood. I, I think he's serious. That's probably blood known him. Uh, so we go down to, to Billy Bob's and we play our first time there. And, and uh, we have the bus with us, and uh, we're hanging out um, outside backstage. We shave Biggie's beard first, so there's hair everywhere too. So then we start pouring blood all around, and then we start doing chalk outlines of bodies. And uh, so the next morning. Uh, Later that morning, the cleaning crew shows up and they call the owner like, someone got killed here. Uh, and so Robert Gallagher, the, the talent manager from Billy Bob's, he drove uh, the next Monday night, he drove to the, the deli where we were at and he brought us uh, security surveillance videos. He was like, they literally called the cops and they came out and they're like, yeah, that's fake blood. And they went back and they watched the video and it's just us going like, no, put your hand up a little bit further, a little bit further. Uh, <laughs> So that's that's Mike McClure. Uh, that's his Thanks, doing. Thanks, Mikey. <laughs> I'm all, sorry. Was there a question? I, I just started talking for no reason. Is there a I, question? Well, I was going to say I was going to say all of that from you having things out in your trunk, which is something Mike McClure would do. So <laughs> as I said, a and twisted red dirt road. It didn't yeah. make sense after all. As I said, don't go out there. Go to the merch table. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little dark back there. It does, guys. You got something you want to close us out with tonight? Uh, we could do some Mac. Since we were talking about Mac. Yeah, you wanna... Or whatever. Yeah, which one do you want to do? I don't know which one. Who sang the last song? Me. Oh. Yeah. No, let's, let's do it. No, let's don't let's not do that one. Um, yeah, here's a good idea. You guys, uh, you guys got to hear Brian White play a little bit of lead guitar, but uh, what you might not know is that he's a virtuoso, and so is this uh, guy back here, and, and so is that guy over there, and that guy, and uh, I know uh, G. So I'm going to play the hell out of this G chord while these guys uh, do their thing. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for the support, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for being My so pleasure. kind to us. And uh, hopefully we get to uh, come back here sooner rather than later. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to close you guys out with a, an old Towns Van Zandt song, if you don't mind too terribly much.
Ladies and gentlemen, the damn quails. <laughs> <laughs>